Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the next in our series of webcasts that we're bringing you uh, from Travel Weekly as part of our roadmap to recovery uh, from this pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic that we are all living through. And today I am joined uh, from across the pond by Lisa lutok Perlo, who is, of course, the President and Chief Executive of Celebrity Cruises. Uh, so welcome, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. So nice to be with you today. Hello, everyone. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, listen, lots to talk to you about. But of course, I was hoping that I would have been seeing you in person this year because oh. you were due to bring the wonderful Celebrity Apex uh, to Southampton. And I would have uh, seen you there. And we were obviously hoping for that big celebration, which, which, which didn't happen. And I guess that's just one thing that you've had to deal with in this last few months, but perhaps talk us through how you've been sort of having to cope with this, Lisa. Yeah, thanks, Lucy. Yeah, I was thinking this morning as I was uh, getting ready for our call, I know it's the afternoon there, but um, I was thinking, oh, I really was supposed to see Lucy a few months ago at the end of March with all of our other friends from the UK in the industry on our beautiful Celebrity Apex. And I got a little melancholy, as you can imagine, because that we were so looking forward to that. And we were so looking forward to that mini season out of the UK with that grand, wonderful ship. But um, it just wasn't meant to be. And, uh, you know, we're all coping, I think all over the world, we're all coping as best we can with this pandemic. And we are all uh, really waiting and hoping for science to catch up with us so that, you know, we can see some light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we get positive reports and then we get some, you know, maybe not such positive reports. But I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out our way forward. We're trying to figure out how to come back even stronger than when we were set back. That's, you know, that's what we say every day. And uh, we're, getting our, we're getting our brands ready and our protocols ready so that we can get back into service. And, and when you say getting them ready, I mean, uh, what, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis, Lisa? Just, you know, as the leader of a cruise industry, talk, I, mean, I guess every day is different, but what kind of things are you personally focusing on? So, you, you know, at first it was getting our guests home, right? So yeah. when we all, in the, in the middle of March, when all of this really started escalating, it was a, quite an extraordinary effort to get all of our guests home. Uh, we all know what was happening around the world, even as we were pulling into port to get our guests home, ports were closing. So honestly, that took quite a while. And then subsequent to that, I think it's been well documented that we've all been working really hard to then get our crew home. And that's really been problematic and difficult. Um, I think that um, there are a lot of different reasons for that. I think it first and foremost, I would like to go on record that we have um, gone through extraordinary lengths to ensure that our crew was always healthy, they were always safe, that we did our absolute best to get them home as soon as we possibly could. Uh, there were things that, obstacles that we were facing, both, both regulatory and even with the different countries around the world, and it was a really difficult task, but uh, I'm proud and, and ha so happy to say that about 98% of our crew is home at this point. And the only crew that isn't, we're really just waiting for their own countries and governments to um, relax some of their own restrictions so that we can get them home. So believe it or not, that has taken a Herculean task from, from all of us. And then we've also really tried to pivot toward uh, return to service and we've tried to pivot toward okay you know that's behind us um, you know the world has been living through this pandemic for quite a few months now and we're starting to uh, really coalesce around what is it going to take both in terms of protocols and science for us to return to service and then for the celebrity team speaking just for celebrity we've really taken this pause and time out as an opportunity to reflect on our brand and um, you know, the, the place our brand has in, in the travel community and industry and the vacation market, how we strengthen that even further. You know, I, every day I wake up 
I try to find a silver lining in the COVID-19 cloud. That's my, that's my motto every day. And so the team and I have been talking about, okay, we've got this unique opportunity where we've taken a pause in our business. So, you know, what do we want celebrity to be and how do we want to strengthen our brand so that when we come out on the other side, um, you know, we're able to do some of the things that we might not have been able to do in the past. And is that is there anything that you can share with us? Because actually, uh, you know, there's a, sometimes a criticism, isn't there, that there's not enough diversification, you know, and people don't understand what each brand stands for. But I don't think people could say that about celebrity because you've had real brand purpose, haven't you? And you've yeah. been very strong on the whole inclusivity, diversity. Uh, so, you know, where else can you take it? You've already gone so far. So where, where what might we see from you guys? So, you know, we thought about, um, you know, our brand and our brand purpose. We've talked about the market, the markets that we have been able to penetrate in a really big way and some that we wish we could penetrate further. And if we wanted to penetrate those markets further, what are the things, the nuanced things? You know, we're actually working with a company um, and they're based in the UK. They're, uh, he's, uh, they're wonderful. They're called Luxury Branding. And um, Pierre Schmidt, I don't know if you know Pierce, but... Um, he was referred to us by Kelly Hoffman. Okay. And then he was also, um, you know, I was, I was on a panel with Kelly and Philippe from Forbes Travel Guide, because, you know, we're, we're working very closely with them to be verified for luxury. And, um, you know, Philippe from Forbes also knows Pierce really well. And we were going to uh, talk to him about our next generation of ships, whenever that might be, and sort of how we up our game even further from Celebrity Edge and the edge theories and then we thought you know what maybe this is a good opportunity to have somebody else take a look at our brand and say you know here's where we think um you know you're you're doing things really well and of everything i know about your brand in the industry these are the things that i can you know that you can i think that you should think about doing uh, strengthening even further our purpose was certainly one of them and you know we've always struggled with um how do we bring that more to the forefront of um our messaging without being you know you know we don't we don't want to go too far with it because you always need a good balance with that but also how do we appeal to younger people because that's uh, even more important our purpose is even more important to the to them different generations and then also you know what do we you know we we're a we're a brand that opens up the world and one of the things that I think is going to be very important for all of us coming out of this is the people want to travel again. They want to go to all of these amazing places again. And that's what our brand is built on. And so how do we strengthen that messaging um, for all of the pent up demand where people have been, you know, we're not meant to live like this, are we? In these rooms, you know, in these rooms in front of monitors, this is not, you know, for months at a time. I think what you realize, again, a silver lining in this is that you realize that what we do is really special and how we take people around the world is really special and how we introduce them to each other and make the world a little smaller is really special. So, you know, we think we have a great opportunity coming out of this to even yeah. strengthen. Uh, interesting you talk about younger people because I know you've all you know you've been trying to get a, a younger person on board for uh, you know a number of years that's not particularly new but do you think that would be even more important um, post COVID given that you know the more, slightly more mature client may be more nervous about traveling um, certainly a lot of the research we've seen is that people should be focusing on the younger um traveler who perhaps isn't, hasn't got the health concerns that, that the older traveler might have? That might be some of it, but you know, I think more of it in terms of our future, right? I think of it more in terms of, you know, a celebrity's growth, you know, we still have three more of these beautiful ships coming into the market. And so as we think about where is our real growth opportunity and where is our sweet spot, you know, some of it is related certainly to maybe um, a, a certain demographic um, being a little more uncomfortable uh, either vacationing or cruising in the future, but that really wasn't the driver. It was really um, accelerating what we've been trying to do for a really long time and maybe um, taking a step back and looking at our messaging and looking about how, looking at our itineraries and looking about looking at you know how we segment and 
and who we're really targeting in a powerful and meaningful way. And I think that was also one of the ahas from Pierce's work. And it wasn't, re believe it or not, it was not related to the, the situation we're living through right now and uh, the, you know, and the, and the perhaps uh, slightly older clientele uh, being nervous about cruising. It was really, where does your brand fit into the world? And who is it, who is the best and most appropriate guest for your brand? And uh, where, is, where is it that we see you should strengthen your brand? And it was really, uh, I will tell you, it was not the millennials. I know we talk about them a lot, right, in this industry and everybody, and all these seminars and all this research. It's really the Gen Xers who are in our in our target. And it's, I think, the perfect market for celebrities. So you're going to see us um, doing a lot more in that space. Okay. And presumably, I mean, everyone I've spoken to in the cruise sector so far has said that obviously the whole health and safety um, you know, issue has got to come more to the fore for all of you. It's going to become more of a priority when people are thinking about taking a holiday. Um, I know that you've just announced this new healthy sale panel, uh, a group wide thing, and that's um, partnering with Norwegian Cruise Line as well. So um, I know you can't go into loads of detail, but you've pulled together some pretty impressive uh, experts. And, and what, what are they doing, Lisa? Because obviously I've spoken to Frank Del Rio from Norwegian already. He's been telling me the kind of things they were doing. That was a, a, a couple of months ago. So how, how, why are this panel being pulled together now and where are they taking this to? Well, you know, as we were looking at uh, the situation that we're in and to your point just a moment ago as you were introducing the, you know, the question, um, you know, the new, the, it's going to be a new normal. You know, Richard talked, about it a lot you know when we and it's a tough comparison to 9-11 but there are some things that are you know fairly similar in that you know people thought people wouldn't fly again people were very nervous about traveling again but there were certain things that were put in place and many of them still exist today where people feel safe traveling and that you know that was um and that was put sort of in the back of people's minds as they're traveling and i think with this pandemic and with the fact that it's probably, you know, not the last time this will ever happen, uh, you know, we have to think about things differently. Everyone in the travel sector has to think about things differently, right? Everybody in every sector does, but especially our sector. The travel industry was hit really hard by this, and the cruise industry was hit the hardest. And so um, as we were thinking our way through and as we were thinking about the things that our own teams were doing, which you know, I have to give our teams a tremendous amount of credit. We've had people 24 seven who are really smart, um, you know, thinking about what are the things that we learned during this pandemic, because we were all learning together. What are the things that we would do differently? And then wouldn't it be helpful to us to engage a panel of experts in across a spectrum of disciplines that could guide us um, and tell us that, you know, who were very familiar with, with working with these types of things. So, you know, we've all seen who the panel is. We've had the press release, you know, it's been well documented, but you know, they're from science, engineering, and public health, different areas of public health. I think half, at least half of the people on our blue ribbon panel have either run or been a part of the CDC in the past. Governor Levitt has run, you know, the health and um, services that the CDC report, reports to. So, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that we were on the right track. And so we decided that it would behoove us um, as a company. And then, you know, Richard and Frank started talking and they thought that we might partner together and, um, and figure out um, what our protocol should be and run them by a, a group of experts to say, you're right, you know, this is really good. And then we also are teaching them about our industry as well, because these protocols have to be practical and we have to be able to execute them. And we also, at the heart of all of this, really want to preserve the guest experience because there are some things that you can do that would really compromise that. And that's, you know, that's not how we want to come out of this. Okay, so, you, so you've got a team of people working on things, but you will get advice and feedback yeah. and guidance from this panel. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, Lisa, you just mentioned there, uh, obviously you've got uh, all these new ships in the, in the pipeline. Um, do you think they will all come when you plan to have them? Or do you think that you may have to stagger that a little bit or delay it a little bit just because, of, you know, this has gone on 
and is still going on, you know, so we don't know when it's going to end yet. So what, what's going to happen in terms of the new... I um, well, I, we haven't we haven't landed on that 100 percent yet, but we are talking to the shipyards. And I think a lot of a lot of this isn't, again, related to um, our concern about bringing them in when we thought we were going to bring them in because of business reasons or demand reasons. It's more around the fact that the yards are not, you know, really need to recalibrate. Right. Because they've been closed down for months. And they need to catch up. And then they have subcontractors from all over the world yeah. who are in various states of readiness to be able to get back to building ships again. And so um, I think because of the pause that we've all had to take, we're all reassessing the new builds and the schedule of them coming out um, as we speak. And at, you know, at a certain point in time in the not too distant future, we will probably land on the new dates with the different yards for our whole uh, corporate portfolio of brands, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of them um, are have, are going to come out a little later than we originally planned, because it's not just us building ships, right? No, I know, right? So we have to, yeah, we have to recalibrate and uh, and reschedule them. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 of course I understand that the, the yards are closed, and so there's that element. But I mean, we the demand as well, obviously, is going to be dented uh hopefully it's short term but um you can't deny that I, lots of people i've spoken to said they, they think it's actually going to be hard to get new to cruisers to to try yeah. it yeah. and i think that's realistic isn't it and but but if it, we, we need them that's been the focus every interview i've done with you guys or any cruise line it's like yeah we've got our loyal guests and that's great but what we need is to get a few more people over from land-based holidays and to try a cruise once they do it they're converted and that that's the concern isn't it um because obviously as you said cruise has been hit really hard it was really in the media at the start of this um and i you know we were just talking weren't we that the foreign office in the uk has just announced uh, it's, it's new guidance and advising against uh, all cruising yeah. which is a, a, another real blow so what, what do you sort of, when you're looking ahead in terms of filling these ships, even if you can delay them a little bit, what, does that worry you? Um, you? So we, a couple things, that was a, that, there was a lot in that question. So let me try to remember. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Let me try to, you know, respond in a way that um, I think you know, would, would be indicative of how we're thinking about this. So we have ever since the pandemic started, we have been gauging and doing consumer research. And clearly, new to cruise, the group impacted by what's going on um, with this pandemic and the press that the cruise industry has gotten because of it. And so yes, that is that will be a market that will take a little time to recover. And, um, and and for us to get the numbers of new to cruise that we um, that we were targeting for for many many years, not only celebrity but the industry, that's a fact. I do believe, you know, it's, uh, Dr. Gottlieb had a had an interesting take on this in an interview that he was in. I do believe that that in some period of time, uh, when we do this right, because we will, we're we're putting too much time and energy, and we're engaging with the best the best people in the world about this we believe that cruising will ultimately be the safest you know vacation that you can take because we do have the ability to control our environment and that is a benefit of cruising and i do believe over time new to cruise will start um you know coming around again when that is i don't know um, again we need science to catch up with us we need therapeutics, we need a vaccine, we need rapid, reliable testing. So, you know, while all of these things are going on, you know, we're hoping this time gives science also an opportunity to catch up. So, uh, yes, so we have seen uh, sentiment around new to cruise um, really uh, turn pretty negative over this over these last few months. So, um, so we need to get ourselves out of that situation and build confidence again. The thing that's really encouraging is that we are booking cruises. People want to, you know, get on the ships again. And a, a lot of them are loyalty guests, but a lot of them are not. 
And so I think that one of the things that we've proven over time is that we will, we will get this right and we will provide a, a safe and healthy environment. And I, people believe that and they're booking their vacations for next year because in addition to some hesitancy, there's a lot of pent up demand as well. So, so you know, we'll, we'll focus on that positive and we'll continue to work hard to convert those people who are probably uh, skeptical about cruising right now. And yes, so there was, there was not great news from the UK today, but um, I heard that because it came out just before our conversation. I wasn't surprised by it. Um, you know, I think that it's just indicative of the uncertainty right now. Uh, but also today, Germany approved cruising. And so, you know, our joint venture, TUI, is going to start cruising at the end of the month. So I think country by country, um, they will decide when they feel that the protocols are good. And, um, you know, TUI will start with short cruises to nowhere, but at least they're starting. And it's a positive sign. And we're we're, uh, we're really wishing them well. And I think if we can get some startups of cruising, I think that others will, will follow. And the UK will probably, I think, as always, and in many things, will sort of follow the US in this and when they, you know, as to when they think that um, the time is right. And so while it was, you know, it was a little disappointing, it wasn't surprising. And I don't, you know, and it is a moment in time, it's today, and hopefully over the next few months, that will change as well. Yeah, and, and if you're, if I was an agent, uh, Lisa, I know you know, a lot of agents will be watching this. Um, I mean, it's really worrying a lot. We've got a lot, I mean, as you have in the States, we've got lots of cruise specialists, their whole business is dependent on cruise, and they've just seen that news come out. What, what would be your advice to them? I mean, you know, presumably they've got to just stay positive and keep selling the forward bookings. But I mean, what would you say to them? You know, I would say that keep, keep staying positive and keep booking the forward bookings. You know, I've talked to you know, some agency groups here in the U S um, and, you know, I know that everybody wants us to get back into business. I know the, I know our travel advisor partners all over the world are anxious for travel to resume. We've all given our careers to this business and we all believe in it. And, um, you know, I know how hard this is when I think, so um, there were two milestones I celebrated in May. I One, just, I saw that 35 years. Yeah, 35 years in this company. And I was sitting here in this little room that you're, you know, that we're having this Zoom interview in and I'm thinking, okay, I did not imagine my 35th anniversary this way. And then um, also in May, Celebrity celebrated its 30th anniversary. And I'm thinking, I never thought Celebrity's 30th anniversary. Our ships would be laid up all over the world with no guests. But, you know, listen, I, this is a really tough time for all of us. But we've got to believe it's going to pass. And uh, we've got to believe we're going to come back. We've got to believe that, you know, I think that the, our, our travel partners around the world need to understand we are doing everything we can, uh, not only to get ourselves back in business, to get all of you back in business, selling these amazing vacations. Um, and, uh, and we want it as, you know, much as, much as everybody else. But the one thing I would say is that it will come back. I know this time is really hard uh sell cruises you know it's and they should do that with confidence you're saying because you are doing absolutely every possible thing behind the scenes everything 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 and so um yeah and uh and we you know i wish i had an answer i wish i had a crystal ball um you know even we talk about when and you've got different people that you know throwing out when they think but Nobody says we're not coming back. <laughs> people, yeah. might, people might say, oh, I think it's now, and I think it's now, and I think it's then. And, but everybody, everybody uh, knows that we'll be back. And so keep looking forward and book those forward bookings and um, have faith that this, will, this, this too shall pass. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Good message. And um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, though, of course, you know, you said earlier you open up the world, which is exactly what cruising does. How, how does it work in terms of um, your cooperation with destinations? Because obviously you can do everything you can to ensure your ships and you know, your embarkation and that kind of thing. But of course you're stopping at all these different ports. 
Mm. Um, and as we talked about earlier, different countries have got different, you know, regulations, etc. So how, how, I mean, that must be a logistical, I'm going to say nightmare, but I mean, a headache, shall we say, but how, how is that working in terms of planning your reopening? So that, that's a really great question, Lucy, um, as all your questions usually are. Uh, but, you know, it's a good point. And I think one of the things that I, is well documented as well is when we open up, it will be slow. You know, we will pace it um, and we will take, you know, a, a subset of the places that we visit and we will work very closely with those places. Um, and we will look just like we're doing with our shipboard protocols. We will look at different protocols in the, in the ports. Uh, we will work with the ports that are most advanced in how they're thinking. Um, we will work with ports that are most advanced in terms of how they are controlling uh, and been able to control this pandemic. You know, we have quite a, a, a good amount of time between now and when we would be back to Europe, for example. So we can really be methodical and work with all of these different ports. And as, as it relates to opening up and even in the Caribbean, because you know a lot of our, our brands uh, focus on the Caribbean, we're working very, very closely with the, um, with the FCCA and all of the Caribbean islands and all of the heads of the Caribbean islands, the prime ministers or, or whoever their top officials are. And again, we're, we're collaborating with them just like we're collaborating with the CDC in terms of um, how we are going to enable, uh, you know, they want to know how we're going to keep their communities safe too. Yeah. And then we want to know how their communities are going to make sure that our, our guests are safe. So we have a whole team dedicated to destination. And, um, you know, we will be very careful and we will be very thoughtful about how, which destinations we visit and how we visit them. Okay. So, yeah. So, and as you say, gradual, small. So we shouldn't expect when, when cruising is able to restart, we shouldn't expect it to be absolutely everywhere. It, you've, you've got to obviously go where you've got the confidence that your guests will be absolutely safe. Yeah. And just think, you know, for celebrity, we have to open up 14 ships. You can't do that all. It's impossible to do that all at once. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's like startups and Royals got over 30. So, you know, it's, um, well, it's, for a start, your crew must be all over the world. You've got to get them are. back. And yep. They are. And they, you know, I've gotten some beautiful heartwarming letters from our crew, thanking us for everything and telling us they can't wait to be back on board taking care of our guests again. But yeah, we have our crew home all over the world, also waiting for us to come back. You know, we, you know, their livelihoods depend on this industry as well. And, um, you know, they've been out of work for quite a while. And so, you know, we feel a great uh, responsibility and obligation uh, to our guests who keep emailing me and saying, I'm cruising on, you know, such and such a date on such and such a ship. Please tell me my cruise is going to go. And I get these heartbroken letters from guests who can't take their cruise. And, you know, our crew who's saying, you know, please get back. Our travel partners, please get back. So the good thing is, is that we have so much support behind us. And it's yeah. such, a, such a wonderful feeling. So that's, you know, good karma goes a long way. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I'm conscious of, of your time, Lisa, but I do want to just finish on this because I read a, a quote about you and it said, as a leader, innovator and smart disruptor, Lisa has always challenged assumptions about the cruise industry. So that's, I'm sure that is true. But I wanted to know, really, you know, do you think now you're going to have to do that even more to, you know, to challenge what we know about cruise to ensure it has this real long term future? Yes, you know, and it, thank God I have that that reputation. <laughs> <laughs> You're going trailblazer. You've got to go out and shake it up. <laughs> I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it now more than ever. Yeah. And it's also it's also part of the reason that we've been you know we've been taking this time to think about that. And when we come back, what are we going to say? What is our message? Um, what what is our brand? What do we stand for? Do we stand for that even? in a bigger way, in a smaller way? Do we talk to the same people? Do we talk to them differently? Um, how do you take a marketing message about this amazing, luxurious vacation and incorporate the health aspect into what we have to talk about? So yeah, so we're, uh, yep. So I do believe that I'm going to have to take all of those things I'm known for and put them on overdrive as we think about, uh, as we think about coming back. But you know what, we will. 
and um, and I have every belief that we will and um, and I and it's not um, you know I'm not I don't think I'm being um, you know naive in it I I know it's going to be difficult for all of us but I know that we're going to do it because I just see what everybody's putting into this and um, and I think that. Uh, in that regard, even the people that are working with us believe in what we're doing. The, pl the panel, the Blue Ribbon panel, every one of them enthusiastically signed up for this. You know, and this, and it's, and you know, to your point, the press has not been, you know, uh, has not been a, a help in this, but they were. Not, not all the press, Lisa, obviously. Not all the press. No, no, <laughs> absolutely not all. So, um, but it makes it harder, you know, when yeah. people, I even, I was even talking to someone that was interviewing with our company. And I said, okay, so why do you want to come to this industry? Tell me. And uh, despite everything, he was extremely positive, looked at it as a great opportunity. And, um, and I think that our, our history, uh, even though this moment in time has been really difficult, I think our history serves us well and our reputation serves us well. And I have a lot of confidence in the future. All right. And although we missed out on Apex at the end of March, do you think we, you, at some point, will you bring her back to Thea? I absolutely will. We're already making plans for that. And can I just say one more thing before we end, um, end this? We track all of our business in our major markets all over the world. And every single week, the UK is the top market in top performance for the celebrity brand. And so I want to just say thank you to all of you. Um, for that and um and so uh apex will definitely be back into the uk and we can't wait to celebrate with all of you oh well that's a lovely place to end it and uh, we cannot wait to see you start operating again when the time is right we understand that um but anything we can do Lisa, to support you because we just want to see you, you up and back and doing all those those things that you're known for i can't wait no pressure <laughs> No pressure. Well, thank you, Ms. Lucy. It's so good seeing you again. Hello in regards to all your viewers and all your readers. And again, uh, happy birthday one day early. I hope nope. you have a wonderful, wonderful birthday. Thank you very much. You weren't supposed to tell anybody about that. Oh, one. We, won't well, so we won't tell them my age. No, no, no. That's right. Keep that quiet. All right. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, take care. Bye, Lucy.